Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Fallout 4's DLC Far Harbor. My name's Camel and this video is going to be a walkthrough guide in which I will show you how to acquire the Rare Weapon Hitman's Institute Gun. We will also run through its various mods and how I think it can be best used. And of course you will need the Far Harbor DLC installed to acquire this weapon. So first of all we need to come to Arcadia. You will be led here rather early on into the DLC so finding this location should be no issue. On the Pip-Boy map it can be found to the southwest of the town of Far Harbor. Once inside and after speaking to Dima, we will have the option to help the other institute leaders. This lady here, Chase, being one of them. Upon speaking to her and offering our help, we will be given the quest The Arrival, in which we have to track down a missing synth. At first, we will have to head back to the town of Far Harbor and talk to Brooks, a shopkeep. After speaking to Brooks, just follow the quest markers, it's quite simple. But once what has to be done has been done, we need to head back to Chase in Arcadia. Once talking to her and completing the quest, we will not not only be rewarded with caps, but also with a Hitman's Institute gun. And as always, before looking at the weapon's base stats, I have reduced all of my character's special attribute stats to one. I also have no bobblehead perk or magazine effects applied to my character. What this means is we will be seeing the absolute minimum base stats of the weapon. Now onto modding, and of course you can mod yours out however you like. I'm going to be modding this out in my own special way, hopefully taking full advantage of the legendary effect. So in the first modification slot, I'm going to be adding the overcharged capacitor, which adds superior damage and improves improved ammunition capacity. For the barrel, I'm going to be adding the improved automatic barrel, which as we can see gives superior rate of fire, improved damage, range and sighted accuracy, worse recoil, inferior ammunition capacity and poor hip fire accuracy. For the stock, we're going to be adding the full stock, turning it from a pistol into a rifle, which gives exceptional sighted accuracy, better recoil and aim with scopes and improved bash damage. Now unless you want to use this gun as some kind of sniper, adding a scope will not make much use of that legendary effect. I think it is best to add the reflex sight so we can aim down sight without having to look through a super scope and our enemies being 20 times bigger than they were. And as we can see it gives better focus and sighted accuracy. Now for the lens I'm going to be adding the quantum gyro compensating lens which gives exceptional recoil and reduced range. But to be honest 191 range isn't exactly reduced. Now once it has been modded out the way I did it has a base energy damage of 32, it uses the fusion cells as ammunition, it has a fire rate of 113, its range is 191 its accuracy is 82, its weight is 7.8 pounds, and its value is 417 caps. Now whatever mods you add to it, it's going to always have Hitman's at the front, and then have a name appropriate reflecting the mods you added. So as we can see, we have the Hitman's Overcharged Improved Automatic Institute Rifle, and of course the legendary effect plus 10% damage while aiming. Now personally, I did find that a little bit of a strange legendary effect, and of course there are better ones as well. But an extra 10% damage isn't exactly too much. So I thought it would be best to fire off more shots more quickly so you get more 10% rather than turning this weapon into some kind of sniper rifle which you could very well do. Especially if you were sneaking and you got an opening shot it would just be an extra 10% on top of that huge opening sneak damage. But even with that unmodded out that way it's not going to be breaking any records unless it hits my vinyl collection. But as we know I added this out to be some kind of machine gun type institute rifle. Fully automatic with huge damage and while hip firing with this modification set, the recoil and accuracy is quite poor. But luckily for us, we don't want to do any hip firing with this gun. We always want to shoot down sights to take advantage of that legendary effect, plus 10% damage while aiming. And let me tell you, while you aim down sights, the accuracy and the recoil control are absolutely on par. The only time the recoil control kind of wins is when you're doing outside of that's really long shots. If you fire off like two bullets, the recoil will be enough to raise the gun enough so you're off target. That's when you're taking shots from like 150 to 190 yards away from the enemy. But most of the time it's not that, it's usually close to medium ranges. In which case, this is absolutely perfect. Now against most enemies, I didn't have too many issues taking them out quite quickly. Although the damage might not be too high, even after putting perks in, you get a damage of about 72, 74, 75, some kind of bingo score like that. Which you know, 75 damage per shot isn't amazing, but don't forget that this is now automatic. This can fire off a relentless barrel of blue beams, but tonically beating your banished foes bastions. And then of course, provided you're aiming down sight, that's going to go up to, what, 82.5 damage per shot? After you add on that extra 10% damage while aiming down sights from the legendary effect. So for weaker to kind of moderate enemies, this is the perfect weapon to take them out quickly in a nice, clean commando style. For those really tough enemies, or any enemies with some kind of energy resistance, this weapon isn't for those situations. For example, the anglers in Far 
Harbour, I had a lot of trouble taking them out with this weapon. But a lot of smaller stuff or humans, they were insects beneath this gun's boots. Now compared to a laser gun, the Institute Rifle, or in this case the Hitman's Overcharged Improved Automatic Institute Rifle, it actually has a superior rate of fire at the cost of per shot damage. So if speed is the aim of your game, then this gun might be your friend. But overall, I found the legendary effect kind of weak, and there was no real specific way to mod it out to get the best potential out of this legendary effect that was obvious to me. To be honest, I think as long as you're aiming down sight, or you have some kind of mod set where it is practical to aim down sight most of the time while using this weapon, then yeah, it's an okay weapon. It's 10% better than a standard institute rifle. Also, luckily inside of VATS, that 10% is always added to the damage there as well. As during VATS sequences, the player character aims down sight while taking the shots. But again, not an amazing legendary effect. There are better ones, but it is superior to a standard institute rifle. It's just as synthal as that. And in my professional opinion, I don't think this weapon's quite a hit, man. And here it is, the Hitman's Overcharged Improve Automatic Institute Rifle in action. There you have it ladies and gentlemen, I've been Camel and this has been my guide to the Hitman's Institute gun. I do hope that this video helped you out. If you did find this video helpful, please feel free to click on the playlist button on screen. This of course will take you directly to my Fallout 4 Guides playlist where you can select the videos you wish to watch freely. Or you can check in the description where it will be frequently updated with links to new Fallout 4 Guides that I upload. If you're listening to me say this right now, please follow me on Twitter, the link will also be in the description. And as always, thank you very much for watching, it's been an absolute pleasure and I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there in a second.